Hello. First tonight, the navigator who fell thousands of feet to his death from the back seat of an RAF tornado jet. Mike Harland had taken off from RAF Marham in Norfolk in 2007 to test the plane, which had been through maintenance work. The inquest today focused on the latch that fixed his ejector seat to the inside of the cockpit. Arriving at today's inquest, Michael Harland's brother and sister finally hoping for answers three years after his death. The 44-year-old navigator was a civilian but had been working with tornado bombers for years. His death caused widespread shock and disbelief. Mr. Harland's test flight in the twin-seat tornado GR4 should have been routine. The plane had just been maintained and upgraded by British aerospace engineers at RAF Marham in Norfolk. They had also removed and refitted both ejection seats. In the skies above North Norfolk, the tornado then carried out a roll manoeuvre. As the tornado inverted, the inquest heard how Michael Harland's seat became detached from the aircraft and fell to the ground. The navigator suffered head injuries, possibly as a result of hitting the plane's tail fin while in flight. At no point was the parachute deployed. Mr Harland's body was found in a field in North Barsham. His death sparked a large-scale search and an internal inquiry by the RAF. A post-mortem showed he'd died of multiple injuries. A police officer told the inquest that a criminal investigation was launched into possible negligence, but no one has ever been charged. Martin Lowe, the Ministry of Defence's head of engineering for ejection seats, explained in detail how the fast jet seats work. One similar to this was shown to the inquest jury. Mr Lowe outlined a key component, a so-called top-latch plunger. The metal component, around three inches long, is designed to lock the seat into position to prevent it falling out when the plane is upside down. The role of an inquest is not to apportion blame. As the deputy coroner outlined today, its purpose will be to find out how Michael Harlan died. The inquest is expected to last five days. Alex Dunlop, BBC Look East, Norwich. A family holiday has ended in tragedy on the Canary Islands. Six-year-old Megan Thrower from Kings Lynn in Norfolk died after getting into difficulties in a hotel swimming pool. Our chief reporter, Kim Riley, has been piecing together what happened. Kim. Yeah, we don't have all the facts yet, but the Thrower family had left their home in Kings Lynn for a week's holiday in Gran Canaria. Now, Megan was with her 12-year-old brother, Bradley, and parents, Debbie and Stephen. They arrived on Saturday in the resort of Playa del Ingles. It's the biggest resort on the island. They were staying at the four-star Gran Canaria Princess Hotel. Yesterday lunchtime, Megan was found unconscious in one of the hotel's pools. Paramedics were called, attempted to revive her, but without success. Now, the hotels referred all our inquiries to the tour company Thompson. It told us Thompson regrets to confirm that one of its customers died yesterday following what it called a tragic accident. We'd like to offer our sincere condolences to the family at what must be a truly difficult time. Our resort staff continue to offer every support and assistance. Well, a local investigation is being carried out by a judge and the police. It's not clear whether there was a lifeguard at the pool at the time. Some reports say it was, in fact, a waiter who first pulled Megan from the water and tried to revive her. The British Embassy in Madrid, we've been in touch with them. They told us it's offering support and assistance to the family tonight. Kim, thank you very much. There's more evidence today that this region will be at the heart of the UK's nuclear future. Two sites are on the latest government shortlist for new nuclear power stations. Sizewell in Suffolk and Bradwell in Essex are among eight locations. Our environment reporter Richard Daniel is at Sizewell now. Richard. Well, Susie, today the new coalition government, like Labour before it, confirmed it wants new nuclear power. Here at Sizewell, what does that mean? Well, it means there could be a new nuclear power station up and running by 2025. Two nuclear power stations, one generating electricity, one not. But both these sites are now firmly part of the new government's plans for a resurgence of nuclear power. At Bradwell in Essex, the ageing power station was shut down in 2002 after 40 years' service. A new reactor here would require major investment in infrastructure, such as new high-voltage power lines. Opponents argue the site should have been ruled out altogether. How you can dare to put a power station on a site that's going to flood when you don't know what you're going to do with the waste in the long run is, is beyond belief. I mean, how does one understand a government prepared to support that kind of site? Don't understand it. But the nuclear industry argues the local economy will stand to gain hundreds of jobs and millions of pounds in investment. 
This Colchester-based fan manufacturer hopes to be one of the beneficiaries. Well, it's a huge opportunity. Uh, in times of recession, we're always looking for something that's got a bit of security about it for the long term. We're involved with cooling the tube. Again, another long-term project, Crossrail. Those sorts of projects are important, and the nuclear one is a big one for us. Up the coast at Sizewell, EDF Energy wants to build two new reactors, producing sufficient electricity for five million homes. In nearby Leyston, many support the building of a Sizewell Sea. Yeah, because it creates a lot of employment around here and it keeps the town going. They say that uh, it provides jobs, um, but I just don't like it. There's nothing else in Leyston. So you've got to think about the future of all these kids. Today, the Energy Secretary, Chris Hewn, reiterated there will be no public subsidy for new nuclear power. The question is, will the private sector be prepared to fund not only the construction costs, but the cost of dealing with nuclear waste and decommissioning too? Now, opponents argue that that is the big issue. We yet haven't addressed the problem of what we do with high-level radioactive waste, where we're going to put it, what we're going to do with it. Proponents of new nuclear power say that we've got to replace 25% of our generating capacity by 2020 and that nuclear must be part of that new mix. They say without it, the lights could go out. Back to you. Richard, thank you. Well, still to come, broadband that's so fast it could change the way we use the internet. And from Delhi...